So we kind of just uh, let offices do their presentation. If we have questions, we'll ask them, but typically we'll just wait until the end to kind of ask our bigger questions, but we can ask clarification kind of along the way. So however we want to make a presentation. All right, Good commissioners. Um, and then just to orient ourselves on what it is, Jim provided the um, yes. materials that I'm um, thinking that you have. Um, so you've got an overall budget spreadsheet, revenue and expenditures for each fund, and then the, um, the PLRs for each fund. Is that correct? And then um, some year-to-date expenditure analysis and revenue analysis. And are they organized in a certain manner? Does it matter to commissioners which order we, we roll with? In mean, terms of funds. Ours, ours might be a little bit different than Commissioner Madden was just because of how we want to do it. We'll okay. roll it out. All right. Um, well, our game plan was to start with road fund, follow up with the ER and R, follow that with our utilities, and then we have the remaining special funds. That's all right with commissioners. Okay. And um, in terms of just preparation, I'd like to just take a minute to acknowledge and thank um, the bigger, big team <laughs> that, and all of the work effort that goes into developing the budgets. So it's um, very much a team effort from every individual in the department that's working on various projects and activities. And then that's all rolled up into our taking a look at what we plan to expand between now and the year end for determining what our beginning fund balances are. And of course, that's kind of an ever-changing target <laughs> um, that is updated regularly. And then identifying what are our key issues and needs within the funds um, that we'll be facing in the upcoming years and then how we program accordingly for that. And I'm hoping that throughout the year that the key issues and needs are things that commissioners are hearing um, as we go along through our briefings and our regular interactions and um, that we're not bringing any shocks and surprises to you when it comes budget session. And so hopefully it's all familiar to you. And again, a big thank you. Mary Lee has put a bazillion hours and I don't like that's probably a, yeah it's no great situation but many many hours uh, in the last few months um, in prep for it and it makes it look easy and I'm very grateful for her work and again part of the, the team it's not just merrily it's a good team effort putting all of this together so with that um, I'm going to go to team team Diane <laughs> because she's been putting a ton of hours in as well uh, to put together our, our road operations and engineering budgets. Okay, so um, if you have all of our PLRs, I've prepared some information um, mostly revolving around the three additional FTE ask for uh, road operations. Um, there's not a lot else that's different besides the fact that um, there are some expenses that we were putting into ER and R um, that legally if we have things that we will not use right away, they go to ER and R for and their inventory and we use them over time. And we had some things in there that we have to use in that year because they don't have a shelf life. And so there's no reason to put them into ER and R and then transfer them to roads. So those items are more just to reduce um, some administrative hours of just swapping things back and forth that they just that doesn't need to happen. So that's just an administrative savings. Um, but on the budget, it looks different um, because it makes a shift instead of going to ER and R and then roads, it just goes right into roads. So it ups the roads budget and lowers. Yeah. What are some examples? Um, like oil for ship seal. So rock, we could purchase rock and not use that in the same year, but oil 
it can't stay in a tanker for a year. You have to clean out the tanker or it destroys it. So um, we could never carry that over into the next chip seal season. Even over weekends, we have to heat it to keep it uh, usable. It can't last longer than just a few days. Um, so there's no reason to put it in to ERNR and inventory it because we're using it right away. So that's the big, that's the big expense. And so that's something to keep in mind when we um, take a look at the ERNR budget as well because that will affect indirects. Mm -hmm. And that was something, yeah, when we get to ERNR, we'll talk about what we're trying to fix across the board is items that ERNR may be inventory for any department. Um, but for the that was the big one. So are there any questions for us? I have a question on that. So mm -hmm. if, if, um, if the commissioners are, are done or don't have a question, um, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'm with you. Yeah. Um, so I was curious about um, how you're going to uh, distribute um, that oil into the different roads. Um, are you going to do that at the time or wait until the end and then do reversals? Um, have, or have you thought about that? Um, so we keep track of the oil as it goes down by the road number. And okay. so we can we do it in cans. Okay. I knew that when I was up there, it was um, you know, always needing an adjustment at year end. And so towards the end of the chip seal year, which is why we had ERNR purchase it. So um, I, I didn't know that you had uh, figured that in. As long as we adjust it in that uh, budget cycle, mm -hmm. then it's fine. There always is it because we have a shop break, but you're always off a little bit here and there. Right. Uh, make it even out again. Mm -hmm. so, but we could do it. I mean, we wouldn't need to wait until the end of the year. We could do it right during the chip seal season. Right. And as long as it's in that same <coughs> time for as long as we're not rolling anything over, then we don't okay. have any for the chemical. Okay. The other thing I think of note, commissioners, on the engineering side is that we have quite a budget line item for our professional services, and that is to account for the pretty hefty construction program that we have to deliver. As you know, we rolled over these two projects this year that we were, or three, excuse me, Three that we're anticipating uh, delivering and those will happen next year so we've got not only our normal planned projects we've got the three from last year that we need to get out the door as well and we're and we're having not having any real success with hiring engineers <laughs> um, it's a very difficult market for engineers so we needed to budget based on the fact that we don't have really many applicants coming in. <coughs> so does the on here there's some that are just oh, zeros? Uh, for example, the industrial insurance. Which, I'm sorry, Commissioner, which line oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, are we looking at? The one on the, the county roads uh, 105. Mm -hmm. And on, what's that, that is? Line seven. Line seven. Way up there. Oh, that's an old bars number. That should be. That's old bars. Okay. And there are some others in here. Are they also old bars? Yes. Thank you. And some, well, some of them are not old. They're just um, used for um, actual expenditures. But um, if we budgeted in every single uh, line, it would be. Um, Cumbersome, so it's rolled. A lot of them are rolled up. Okay. But that particular one you asked about, um, it should be deleted. Okay. And then what about the unapproved budget position? Those lines 42, 43, and 44. Was that from previous years? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so while we're talking about those, um, there's some other things that we requested. To fill or to be yeah, to, to create yes. not to be filled. To create and fill. Okay. So I have some um, I requested some data from CRAB 
and I ask that we have our comparable counties that are comparable for various reasons, um, but I ask them to give us um, the counties that are closest related um, to Mason County as far as not only like miles of road, but how many maintenance shops so that, you know, if one, dip, if say an area had like five maintenance shops, then their crews aren't traveling as far if they have 600 miles or if they have different weather, they might have, um, like we actually were quite comparable with like Ponderay County, but they have a lot of smell. Can you hand this up? Um, I have some extras if anybody wants to see um, what we put together. Um, so I grouped these really uh, broadly. Um, we have a lot more gravel roads um, than any of um, the counties that we looked at, but I didn't, so we spent more on that, but I grouped all of the grading together, um, all the pavement repairs, drainage, uh, channelization and signage, snow, uh, brush mowing, and then everything else I put miscellaneous, which is if we have any um, erosion control, uh, bridge maintenance, those were items that weren't as large when we're talking about um, in the millions of dollars. Um, and the number I wish I put in here that I can send you later that I just thought of when we got here was what our comparables would be with the three employees. Like I should have had a fifth little line over um, on, the, on this chart that is the um, road miles maintained per FTE. Um, if we had the three, would that bring us more in step with our comparable counties um, or not? Um, and the Cowlitz County um, data we were able to get was from 2014. Um, I can get their 2019, but we didn't have it yet when we put this together. But everyone else, everything else on here is based on 2019 a budgeted and maintenance management plan. Um, and in the PLR, we put together um, what the three employees could do throughout the year. Because I think most people always think, oh, in the summer, we need more people because it's the go time each chip seal and um, day labor uh, county workforce, now they call it. Um, and in the winter, it's nice to have those people when we have like a crazy winter like we did, but there are things that can be done year round that we used to do a lot more of um, prior to 2007. And it's important that we um, get back to doing those things. Um, one key thing of note I found fascinating because I just asked Crab for data. We weren't trying to look into any particular details. I wanted it to be, okay, please give us what we, you know, what information we should look at, um, was that only two of the four counties that they compared us with um, have a crack seal program, and we spent over twice as much as, I think it was California, <coughs> the other one on crack seal, which is a good way that we keep our good roads good. It gave me a lot of, like, looking at where we spend our money um, with what we have, I felt really good about what we're doing. I just wanted to have that on crack seal covered on this. Um, under pavement uh, repair and preservation. It would be added into, so this is rolled in all of our bog seal, crack seal, chip seal, <coughs> this, um, all of our pre-level the year before. Um, so this is everything that goes into preservation program. But I uh, looked at it initially um, by, there's the individual bars codes that go into the maintenance management or the um, maintenance management plan. Um, so where we are over, and I do want to address where we have the highest is in admin, but we um, included things in our admin that other counties didn't, um, where a lot of them have like miscellaneous <coughs> item where we think they're probably putting like their utilities and that kind of thing, but we include that in our line item and help puts our plan together so he can speak to it if there are questions. Um, but like island counties, their admin is only there for supervisors, it doesn't include like they're sending them out or any other administrative costs that only included their supervisors. So like our Brennan Grant. Well, where, do, where do they have, where do they have those positions? Uh, I was just going to share, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that go into our <clears throat> maintenance administration that I don't believe other counties, they, they reflected elsewhere. 
So we have things such as our radio towers and all of our utility bills and uh, the insurance programs. And, uh, you can follow on that. And, and we go through admin for those, huh? We go through admin. That's where we reflect right now. Which, um, I, I would just say as part of the budgeting process, um, we've tried to better align our maintenance management program with our budgetary process. And in doing so, it doesn't quite fit apples to apples. So we tried to pull costs in where they should be reflected. And that did drive our, our NMA cost well, that's higher true. than what other would reflect. Because that, that, that's quite a bit. That would change some of these other numbers than if we were to reallocate them into different areas. It, it, it would change the numbers mm -hmm. elsewhere. And that's why I then followed up with the miles maintained per FTE and the dollars mm -hmm. spent per mile on our roads on those two, because I thought that would help reflect reality. Commissioners, have you seen the maintenance management plan? Ever seen the that product or the? Yeah, I, I, I get it's it. a tremendous amount of work, and Al leads that effort. Um, basically, it's a plan that is generated that identifies all equipment, materials, labor, everything involved in delivering our road operations program through the year and then at year end Al and team generate a report on what did we actually deliver and it's a pretty intricate spreadsheet um, and it's what we use to drive both our budget and what we plan to do and I applaud Diane and the team for taking a look at comps it's been a while since we've evaluated how we compare to other counties and, and what we're actually putting out on the ground in comparison. And we'll obviously dig deeper into um, some of these details, but it's, do you it's know timely. How, uh, do you know how we compare, um, you know, we have a lot of money in reserve, uh, <coughs> reserve and all the, you know, different, different mm -hmm. things to these other counties um, are we unique in that or no. so how, how do our reserves compare to theirs cowlitz county for 2019 had 11.2 million um and then gray's harbor let's make sure for 2019 um actually they only have 3.4 million so theirs was um quite a bit Lower. Um, Island County has 13.1 million. Oh, and we're the fourth one. So, and we have about 12. so we're on par with Cowlitz and Island. Um, if So, ours would be with the three projects we didn't complete though this year, ours would be significantly less. I mean, we have a one point. Six million in paving into like three hundred thousand dollars, or, or we have a plan for three hundred, and we'll be spending at least three hundred of county dollars too. So we'd be, we'd be about two million less if we had completed our program mm -hmm. last year. Commissioner, that's a good question, though. We were discussing that when we were preparing to come down the whole issue of um, reserves and fund balance and the intent behind the the new road fund reserve and some clarification I guess for our purposes is that was that intended to be specifically for new roads or to preserve capital for our construction program which one are we talking about the Indian fund reserve new roads yes that was supposed to be for new economic development Specifically, specifically for kind of like the romance of that's what we called it when we, yard road. when we started okay. it, it was for new economic development when we started okay doesn't mean it doesn't change i'm just saying yeah. when it was started, that was the intent it, at that yeah. time and it was given that specific name okay so i was also looking at the the plr and the graph you put together which i think was really helpful um what on there if anything isn't getting done based on current staffing or is this all getting done you were just saying that if we had three extra positions more would get done 
Am I interpreting that the right way? So we're doing all of the things because we're required to. What we are not doing is as much of it as we used to. Mm -hmm. And the and I'd like Cal to speak to on and Cindy on the operations and maintenance side. Um, but the area that I see that every other county spends more um, per mile on is our shoulder condition. And I, this actually even came up um, before I looked at these numbers at our last tip cap meeting, um, particularly on our local roads that we have been doing our best to keep up on the higher ADT roads, but some of our local roads with like 1,000 ADT and less are um, being left a little bit behind. And it's kind of average daily traffic, sorry. And so some of, in the, um, in the written portion, um, here you'll see there's some bullets um, that have numbers from 2007. So costs have gone up, fuel and equipment costs, but we're spending like 47% less on culvert replacement, 49% less on patching, 47% um, less on mowing. Um, that kind of, we've reduced brush cutting uh, by 14 shoulder miles annually. And so those are the things that as we do less and less that you know, the grass on the side of the road it keeps growing. So it becomes it harder and harder to catch up um, even if we're adding additional staff. So if the three positions were added, what on there how much improvement would you see, or how much of a return to those 2007 levels, since that's the metric you used, how much would we gain back? Um, so we would, we had um, eight more people at the time, so we would be able to add back almost half. Is, is that, do you feel the same? Roughly speaking. And the question I had this morning also was whether we've got the supporting equipment for the folks, and we do. So that is not a, um, this wouldn't trigger, I guess, additional new equipment needs. You may recall last year that um, we requested a skid steer and a stump grinder to be able to assist with our clear zone projects. And this is another example of how to have additional um, folks to put that to work. We would do that anyway, but we could more fully utilize that. I think the other real simple uh, gain here is that our ability to use county forces will readily pay for itself by the, the cost savings we would have for going out to contract for some of our simpler small construction projects. So these some examples. Some examples would be our culvert replacements. And um, if we've got a half million dollar project and the contractor has a 25% profit, which is typical, there's a hundred thousand right there. Some so our, there's one one position for one project if you want very simple terms. You've got a potential savings that you're saying at 375 right here. You think you'd really save that much? If we maximize our if we maximize our county one point two million. Yeah. Um, the other one we could do is some of our local roads that are beyond the point of maybe being able to do a chip seal because we've let them go for a long periods of time we have some developments. Um, that we could now pay with um, the paver, um, and the crew did such a great job, like um, at Mason Lake and uh, Trails End. That uh, road looks spectacular. So, um, if those are things that cost a lot just in to mobilization um, to bring contractors in, and now we could do that with our county workforce. Yeah. So a few. You also mentioned in here that you can. Uh, start to work on the, the gravel projects, gravel road projects, what does that look like? That you'd be able to do with the, the extra hands? So we could um, add to our chip seal program. So and this has been a big thing. Our tip cap has wanted to do the gravel road upgrades and we put some money in the tip to start looking at that program. 
um, if we have three more people, we can get more, we can add that in uh, to our chip seal program that we have now, whether dependent people is about whether to, um, but we can add those. The du it's a double chip one year with a single shot the next year. To the so there'll probably be an increase in the amount of money that's needed to do those as well. So we need to be mindful of that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Or a simple increased maintenance frequency on our gravel roads. I mean, that's, that's a common call. <laughs> that we please come out and take care of my gravel road more frequently than you are. One of the questions that I had when this was proposed the last time um, was, so you're asking for three, say we fund one. Mm -hmm. Is that just if one eighth of the work comes back from those 2007? I mean, is, would it be workable with, with one or two? Or is it necessary? Is there like some magic in adding three? Yes, there is magic. <laughs> there is magic. <laughs> there is work that one person can do, but there's a lot of work that one person can't do, and that's why there's crews and groups and crew configuration. Speak to any specific examples? Well, because you need flaggers. So during the winter, say you're on a project and you have your equipment operator and you still need your you need flaggers on both ends. So if you're going to take on another project, it takes basically two or three more people. Like an example, like if we're mowing or something, then, or if we're shoulder grading, then we have flaggers at the end. Yeah, and, and then you have. Wait, what are we paying for flaggers these days? He is $17 now. And what, what would these folks be at? <coughs> Probably two. Without benefits, 24. And are yes. they are they uh, flyer certified also? Are you saying? Yes. Okay, yeah, one of one of the uh, one of the aspects of our road operations, uh, if you start talking about what are, what do other agencies look like, um, we have we have some summer help um, flagging, that, roughly speaking, May through October, that uh, is on board helping out and it, it is a, a big help to have that. Most agencies have double or more of the summer help that we have and a lot of them have not just summer help, they have a year round help which right now we're, we're where we're at through our collective bargaining agreement so um, that's kind of where, where Mason County has landed up to this point but I just thought it would be good information for, for you guys to, to know when you're talking about you know, how many people are out there working, what are they doing. Um, as they said, we, before the down, we saw the downturn coming and we, we started losing by attrition and we never did have to lay off anybody um, all the way through it. But we, we dropped from having uh, 30, 34 and a half, I believe it was, FTEs up on the crew. And we dropped all the way down to 22 at one point. So it was a, a huge drop in our level of service drop, just as in some of you approved the, the wintertime snow removal policy that says that essentially we weren't going to operate between 10 o'clock at night and 4 o'clock in the morning. That was a change. So. so what we do with the seasonal help is they come in and do the non, the, the sign washing and the weed eating and and flagging so your skilled labor or truck drivers are doing that work rather than flagging or brush cutting. But even the flagging you can't undersell that because the truth of the matter is it's nice to have somebody that's actually there. When I worked for the PUD we had to do both. And then the environment we work in now Randy is much different. Uh, regulatory wise uh, it takes more people to, to set up a work zone, an operator work zone. We have a, a lot more traffic than we used to have. Yeah. Um, I think we, we kind of go over that in the justification paper, but um, we have <clears throat> you know we have three thousand some odd culverts in the county. If you talk about just cross culverts, but when you start talking driveway culverts, and we have development after development that was built back in the '60s, which have a lot of culverts that are at or beyond their lifespan and. Uh, We've really curtailed replacing those pipes over 
<clears throat> over the years that we're not doing now that we really need to. Now, if you were to get one crew going full time, and just doing vegetation just doing culvert replacement. replacement. If you were going to get the if you were to get these employees uh, aside from flagging, are there any other cross modalities you'd be working to train them on? Vegetation removal. Um, we could put a crew on that pretty mm -hmm. much. How about, how about some of the backhoes and stuff? Will they be trained to do any of that at all? Or? Uh, They'll just be low on seniority, but yeah. we would cross train them onto the trucks and the heavy equipment. BMPs, we've talked about specialized, yeah. basically specialized yeah. teams yeah. as right. well. So BMPs would be another for our um, in water and near water work. And asset management, you know, one of the is we're going to go into the municipal discharge permit. Um, we're, we've been kind of aligning ourselves to be ready for that, but that's still a huge another area that it takes manpower to, to deal with. Along with our guardrails, post replacement, um, those are the things that have been neglected. Love our inventory. Mm -hmm. Done a good job making our way through culverts, but by the time we get through, we'll need to go back through for the condition again. Mm -hmm. The signs are well inventory, but we're getting them while we can, but we will have a, we will have to if we will become an NPDS. Mm -hmm. yes, not for what would uh, What would a report back look like to commissioners? Hearing. Let's say the three positions were approved. What would you like to see in terms of this was what we were able to do as a result of these three positions? We were able to do X more miles of shoulder work. We responded to. I'm just curious if that. I, I'd be worried if we did that. To be honest with you, because the truth of the matter is, is uh, if we the flexibility would be the hope mm -hmm. that it creates. So if you start pigeonholing them to do one thing to make sure that we're impressed at the end, mm -hmm. I think you might have, you might lose some of the real opportunities that mm -hmm. have the employees would create. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, to that end, you have a list here in the PLR mm -hmm. that talks about some of the work that they would do. I mean, I, I don't know how far outside of that these, you know, these positions we get. So I mean, I guess that's kind of the universe of what we're dealing with. So I mean, I, I think if you can show up a marked improvement on those, um, you know, I think the gravel road piece is a, is a priority for me. Um, me as well. So yeah. that's a couple so of that, yeah. all us, yeah. So yeah. all three of us have yeah. that. So no, I think that would be a one item. Culverts, as you know, Alan was mentioning, is a, is a huge issue in the county. So I mean, I think you know what needs to be done. Um, and I, I don't have any concerns about you bringing back data to show that we're not done. And I like the ideas with that of the backup cuts of the idea that our staff, when they got stretched to the best that they possibly could, yes. uh, it would have been nice to have a little something more to work with for them. As a piece of equipment we're breaking and trying to come back and the whole sections that couldn't really take care of all that got done. If we had some others go out in another truck, it mm -hmm. could have made a big difference. And that's for the short term. For me, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm more interested on the overall. The gravel roads, I think, is important. Because I think we can keep track of that. Um, I know the culverts are big, but I still keep hoping we're going to find a connection with the tribes where they're going to change how we're doing all that to save us. I'm, I almost am hesitant to keep moving forward on the culverts until we can come to some agreement with, with them. But it is where it is. I don't want to part I just have my feelings on that. And one of the other factors for me in deciding on this is going to be ultimately what we decide with um, traffic policing diversion. I wanted to see that lowered uh, in this budget. So I think that will go a long way to determining what our ability to do this particular request will be. Commissioner, you have the floor items? If you don't mind, can you open yours? Because I'd like to go over a few of these so I can have a better understanding of what you were doing. Uh, on the very first one on your, uh, are we opening the overall budget yeah. or the, okay. the overall budget, please? Uh, my spreadsheet's flashing. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign or not. <laughs> I know. It's 
weird. I know. It's weird. I don't know what it's up to. It's confused for sure. Maybe it just doesn't like the scale. Yes. If we can go to the expenditures, uh, the very first line, we have some big adjustments that I'd like for somebody just to explain to me what you were doing here and what you have. So the reserve, the ending fund reserve? Yeah, the end, ending fund reserve. For the budget I have in front of me, I have some major changes. So that like are to... you talking about in the PLR column? Yes. Yes. Um, that was just an adjustment that I did so that the revenue and expense balanced in the AE column. Or the very final, the total budget, uh, including the PLRs and adjustments column. So uh, for now, that column will change depending on on what happens. Um, you know what we adopt in the budget. So for now, I would just ignore that. But how do I ignore? <laughs> yeah, um, I just don't see how I can do that. Uh, just I mean, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Because I still don't understand um, what we're doing here. Where, where, where is that? Has to do with, um, so in the end fund reserved column, also in, in um, did you see the 5.899 million? Yes. Um, so in mine, I have 396,000. So a lot of that, you know, that 4 million is, is for that. It just um, was a difference in we, where. Well, did we, pa we passed something that said that we would have a certain dollar amount. Right, and so I put my mine in in budget level three the way that we had passed it and then um, public public works put in um, a different amount for the beginning fund balance so that just um, yeah i think that's where i have my confusion because i thought the amount that we did would not was much greater than the budget level three okay. um, we have the four million underneath um, the three hundred and ninety six thousand uh -huh. that's the amount that we pass it in the policy no that's for the new roads Right, and so then that should not, not be that. That should not be that. That was the the new roads, and then underneath that we have the operating reserve, mm -hmm. which is the um, I believe that was the twenty percent. Right. right. Okay, so you moved, you moved it there and take, took it off the top. So now we're we're only we're less than two million off. Okay, we're getting closer. Right? <laughs> we okay, it, yeah. I see that. Five. All right. And then the 396000 is what I have left in um, budget level three. Okay, so, because we created the operating reserves, what we created. Okay. It's yeah, just distributed differently. And I think that difference might be Deegan Road. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just um, because of the time when we started, we haven't moved it, and then we okay. we moved it after just the fact this year because. Yeah. I'm so comfortable with all that. Makes all the differences. Yeah. Now I know where the money is because I was really having a hard time trying to understand that. Okay, so on these uh, un unapproved uh, budget uh, requests for the three positions, uh, could you also include to us the parts that are, are not baked in? Uh, you know, Which line items are we? Uh, you have the, the 2020 unapproved budget positions. Oh, yeah, way on top again. Yeah, so with those, uh, with those three, this is just the, this is not including the fully baked. I'd like to see the numbers that are fully <coughs> baked so we can okay. tell exactly. As we get at the end, if we're doing the same way we've done in the past, at the end we'll look at it, we'll be decided, are we going to go with these PLRs or not? So when we do make the decision, I would like to see what the real numbers are, not, yeah, because of benefits and taxes and that's the real number we're going to be talking about. So that's so in the in the in the PLR that we PLR. submitted. Um, I don't know the project number off the top of my head. I, I numbered them, Commissioner, and okay. so those are in next to um, on your report. You'll and see three next project to number three. Yes. Yeah. And so if you go to your PLRs, they're in project number order. So project number three has um, the total amount of two hundred and forty-five thousand. And that includes salaries, the L&I. Okay, so that's the number that we're looking at, 245 yeah. fully baked. Yeah, that's what, clothing allowance. That's what I needed to provide. Explain the uh, office supply difference, please. Yes. 
which um, which line are you on? How are you using the 531? That's, well, no, that's where you're getting it. I don't have that. I'm trying to think. I don't see line 19. I don't. Okay. So why why that difference, please? No, it's not like me. Yeah. There would be an increase in that. That would be the oil. I'm at 531. Oh, that's the oil. oil. The oil one. Yeah, I'm at okay. 531. 531. 542.10.531. Yeah. Oh. Are you looking at 1,048? No, 1,968,823. Yes. Right. right. That's right. the. That was your request. Yeah. And it's doubled. That um, includes the oil for the chip seal which used to go into ER&R. &R. And so it would be purchased as an inner roads. fund. So roads would purchase it, but it would be purchased through ER&R. &R. But now it's going right, being purchased through operating supplies. So we have that under office supplies? So oper office and operating supplies. Mm -hmm. So it's just a reality. It's just moving the expenditure Ours. line. OK. It looks I don't like the like choice we chose for <laughs> office supplies. <but laughs> As long as I understand it, I'm comfortable with it. As long as I understand it, and so that's the removal of 770 then from uh, ER and R. Roughly. That explains a lot there. A lot. <laughs> Thank you. Professional service increase, um, 541. And that's where we kind of are doubling up in the budget because um, we included salaries for the open engineering positions, but if we're not able to hire and some of them have been open for months and months and we can't find engineers, then we are going to have to hire consultants to both on the construction and the design side. What did we end up for actuals this year? You know. Um, I know that when we last checked, I believe we were about thirty, was it thirty-five percent or so, merely under on the engineering side of the services. But you're going to keep going out for those, no matter what. We're going to keep trying to, to yeah. fill them. For, yes. And the reason they're continually out since okay. I've been here, and we. Well, I'm just trying to think out those other positions and if there's a, you know, you know the different departments, uh, the sheriff's department is one of them, they go over and over again what they're going to have Here's a lack of hiring. And mm -hmm. so that's part of their budget that doesn't. If that's the case, we need to be aware that we're making our determinations for the other positions that we may or may not fill, knowing that there's right. unfilled capacity. Yeah. That's all I'm just saying. So the Oh, I was going to say, if we're successful for whatever reason, then we will underexpand our professional services, and that will go into our fund balance. If we're unsuccessful in filling our positions or com well, if continue you're able to, to be pull that off off the top, I'd be shocked. Well, and another thing is, How if we are Um, so if we are able to hire um, based on the applications that we have seen, we would have a lot of training mentoring. to do and training. mentoring, which would also mean that we would still need consultant help because, as we all know, it takes time to mentor and there's a learning curve. So. Uh, reconciliation between you guys, the two of you, when it comes to capital machinery and equipment. Could you 
please explain to me that? So in um, budget level three, there's no capital in there. And um, when the PLRs were, were filled out, it was assumed that the capital was in there. So the difference that's um, included in the PLR is um, that would form the PLR form not, uh, in budget level uh, okay. four. Okay, I got you. Um, is the difference between the June 30th budget and um, that, the ask for 2020. That absolutely makes sense. Thank okay. you. <laughs> You're welcome. We have the same question. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, I'm supplies. And the next operating office and operating supplies, which would make sense for the other name, but this one's called office and operating supplies, uh, uh, 595.10.531. Yep. Yep. You asked for uh, 140,000 less. Which one? 5431053? Yeah. Yeah, 240 and, and 19. So capital. In oh. construction. I'm sorry, I'm not in construction. 595. Um, culverts were purchased this year, so the Deegan and Shelton Valley culverts were purchased in 2019 and those will be installed next year. So you don't so need it for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one, a couple more down professional services. So I think design work That's on our construction yeah. program. Mm -hmm. That's what's making the following year, right? It's full on the both sides. Or excuse I me, mean, those are our yeah. contracts yeah. for construction. We had 9, 10 the year before. You asked for 180. She put in 9, 10 again. And I'm wondering if there's a double up here on the one that wants earlier, or what are we doing? I'm sorry, what, which line is that? 595.10.541. Um, for professional services? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we're asking for an increase of money. Um, I think that was one that the budget number uh, changed. So, um, it, on the PLR, um, it turned in a different amount and um, wanted to change the budget from 910000 to uh, $1.2 Right. Okay. And it's based on the annual construction program. So that's where, that's where <coughs> the construction. Now, if those are professional services, is there any chance that that's going to go down if we were able to bring in the other three positions? Or are these already contracted out at that number? believe you had already programmed in the culvert, right? right? Because we for county forces. forces. So no, it wouldn't go it down. Would not this is so <coughs> contracts. Okay, construction capital assets, a few more down. Go over that one. This is our, our contractors. Yeah. So this is based on the annual construction program. And this is. How do we have different numbers then? How do you see different numbers over there? So that, again, they changed the number after they turned in the pre win. Okay. And this is like, well, the Lotus County Workforce. Um, so you brought the number back down to 46.7. I just want to make sure that we're not going over the top and telling you it's going to be this. Not that you would do that on purpose, but I just want to make sure we don't make a mistake. So what I'm understanding is you went back and said, we're changing it to this. She accommodated it. That's why it ends up in her line. And so that's where we're at. Yes. Okay. So okay. they're asking for the 2.88 million. 2.88 million. That's all I have. And that's, and that's mostly rollover. Like the paper contract. A huge amount that we're advertising this year, but maybe next year. Thank you for indulging me that this wanted to actually understand these. Perfect. Okay. Commissioner Travis, any questions? Not sure I will. 
Okay. All right. Next. Interesting, though, I just realized, though, so some of those, if those are the actual numbers, then that's maintenance. Um, well, they're changing their PLR ask. Um, But if, yeah, if it's lower than last year's, then it would be. But even if it's, if it's the fulfillment of contracts of what they were going out, that's still maintenance that we've already agreed to do. That's, they don't, you put it, we put it in a PLR, but we already said we're doing it. So agreed. therefore, it should be maintenance. Right. So can yeah. you go back through these again and see which ones and show us again later so we can uh, talk about and agree which ones we need move over to maintenance. And I hate to see a contract or something we already said that we would do fall off because when we go through these PLRs, most of them did it all the way. So we want to make sure that the things that are actual maintenance are guaranteed. Yes. So yeah. maintenance, sorry, talking about the budget? Maintaining the budget. Yeah. Okay. No, I was like, wait, no, no, no. For us, the idea, if the cost of something went up, and we're already doing it, that's maintenance. Uh, you're not asking for a special thing. If you have projects that you're already doing that the cost is this, this, that's part of the maintenance from our, our perspective and should already be rolled into the budget. It's not something we should take up in the end and say, yeah, no, we're not going to do that one. Or we're not, because we already said we would. So I just want to make sure that some of these ones that we've readjusted, especially that's some big dollars, if I can make sure that if they're maintenance, then you bring them to us so that we can agree their maintenance and move them over so we don't pre litigate it. Okay. So I can get with Public Works and go over which ones are maintenance, yeah. but I wanted to make sure that um, that you agree that it's, that it's yes. maintenance. So, okay. No, I'm good with that. So, so you can bring that to us so we can, if okay. you want, we can meet with them again at the time. But I just want to make sure that we don't. Mm -hmm. We don't cut out like our yeah. paving program even yeah. though we already. That we already agreed to go for it. You know, it's different. The PLR is something you're asking to do mm -hmm. uh, in the future. These positions, mm -hmm. you're asking for that. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to be maintenance. Right. Now, the wages, that the increases, they get their steps. Uh, whatever happens to L&I, stuff like that, it's maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so maintenance is that's not maintenance. No. <laughs> and actually, and actually, this is going to be better for you when we're done. Because yes. there's a lot of stuff that's going to be disappear off of here for a request from us because it's not supposed to be a request. Maintenance on a budget that's, term. Yeah. Like it. Maintenance as a budget term. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to ER and R then. Um, I guess the big, I, we'll start with assumptions. The assumptions were, we're operating under the, the same game plan. And if future decisions are made, then we'll need to adjust the, the budget accordingly. But basically, we went with what we know today at this point in time. And let's see. I did want to touch on some of the things that we are planning to do as part of our, our normal operations. We already talked a bit about the oil, that it will no longer be in the ER and R inventory and how that would affect the, the budget. We will be taking a look at and needing to reset our interlocal agreement rate and We'll be doing that before year end and getting out communications around that. And we will also be uh, increasing our fuel markup and needing to get that nailed down before year end. Other items, Diane, that we're planning to do just as those are our three, those are our three biggies. And let's see. So the 757 that I'm looking at, uh, that's that oil, on the old road materials. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is the oil moved over already. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about other sales? 103,000 that you're not, that you did not put in. Yes. She put it back in though. So. 
that was sale of sign materials. I think we decided in our budget meeting that we were okay in our sign materials at this point, and we didn't I'll budget anything. Because you put it back in, so I need to. <coughs> so if you don't put it back in, that's a savings this year of 103. And then the. Uh, Equipment vehicle rent long? long is that long term rentals? Okay. Yeah, I'm going there, that was such a big increase. Which that's based on that's our um, that's our ER and our rates, so that's the the rate structure. So the rates went up that much to bring in that much more? Almost more. And the same thing for operating versus any fund reserve you get, right? You just um, for this one, I don't remember if I adjusted the ending balance. And the 805 or the at zero? <clears throat> yeah, I know I did some adjusting on there for, um, for again, the difference between the operating, um, since all of those were their beginning, or, yeah, their beginning fund balance was um, in one line. And so I, you know, changed it into two lines. Fuel sales, um, there's zero budget. Is that um, is that correct? Outside, are we in revenue? Outside fuel sales. Are we on revenue side? Yes, on the revenue. And which line? Uh, that's under line six or three forty four. Okay. Yeah. Fuel sales, fuel sales, and at forty thousand, is that the one you're talking about? Um, well, on the outside fuel sales, um, for for uh, under line three forty four fifty thirty, um, it's zero. Line six. row six. Row six. Sorry. Oh, yours is different. Yeah, I'm looking at my other spreadsheet. Okay. No, it's all right. So how will the ER and our budget be affected if we go with the fleet? Yeah, sure. So keeping everything as it is without staff changes or anything, um, we're anticipating and we've had to guess at a few numbers. Um, so we have a range of two hundred and seventy to three hundred thousand dollars a year for an impact to roads and utilities. And that's just because then the building cost is not split amongst it's just ours um, utilities, so all of those things are no longer split amongst as many users. Oh gosh. Okay. Thank you. We did have zero in there, but we should probably look at that in the program. Okay. So uh, uh, sure, uh, I'd like to ask that when we're done with this, you guys, because there's actually a lot here that I'm that you guys are not in the on the same page with. I'd love for you guys to sit down, go through that, and get those things isolated, so we can start to move things out of the PLR and move it into the maintenance again for the, what I'm looking at here too, because the numbers she's seeing and and some she's. She's right, they have to be there, but at the same time, we need to work together to figure out how to get this so that it comes to us with a lot less of this stuff, and there's so much in here that there doesn't need to be. 
And it's not that you've done anything wrong, that's not an order that you have. But somehow by working together, you'll be able to get most of that out of the way so that our decision points are a lot easier. So we're just actually dealing with PLRs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And, and we're not here to challenge you on the, on the maintenance level increases. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it's something that's out of the ordinary, then, you know, our staff will catch that and she'll bring it to our attention. But for the most part, we want you to be able to move forward with all of those. Because we're not foreseeing a, a reduction in what we're trying to do. So. I do have a suggestion for next year that would make this process, I think, a lot easier on my end and the department's end. Um, so I think it would be easier to, uh, for me to send out um, the budget to all the departments and for them, instead of filling out the individual PLR forms, um, to go through and just make notes and, and number. They could, you know, put in a number, yeah. a project number, if they would. would like and they could also fill out the PLR form if they if they choose. Um, you had talked about that earlier also how that could streamline our whole process. Right. Yes. And I think that's you know we still have the PLR situation for all of us, <coughs> but at the same time just handled in a different manner. I uh, you know I don't know if we have to make that decision or if it's just go forward and make stuff happen for us next year. <laughs> I can definitely write it into the budget instructions for next year. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say I thought we were trending in that direction, in a similar direction last year, and there were some issues raised by departments filling the, that circumvented the preliminary budget process. So keep that in mind. Well, I, you know, I remember now. So. so we have to figure out how to deal with that part of it. Because I, I think part of the issue that we're, the issues to, to sorry, we're now we're talking about budget process and not sorry. PR and R, but I think the issue is twofold. One, you have a preliminary budget that looks one way, and you have our budget level three that looks another way, and then in the middle of that you have these PLRs, and so yeah. something's got to give on, on one of those sides, and I, I have my opinion on, on which, but we can figure that out next year when we, you know, kind of is what it is right now. And overall, even though th there's a lot of labor and back and forth, I do think that it was a pretty um, good collaborative process. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful for that. Always room for improvement, but. Last question on the foreman pay. Uh, you had 200 budgeted the year before, you have 1500 budgeted this year, um, which leaves a very big, you know, $1,300 difference. I'm just curious. Just there. <laughs> oh. The foreman pay, if we increased it $1,300 from Just the previous year. So when there's, if Jeremy's gone, then if one of the guys can step up and do the foreman. Because yeah. they get paid out in class for $2 for an hour. So they take care of the road calls and the phones ringing. And, and when Jeremy does it, he's salaried, so there's no, mm -hmm. when there's stuff over a weekend or anything, it, it's free, but when he's on vacation and someone's doing it, they're paid by the hour. Is that because we didn't account for it in the previous years or it was low. under expense? Yeah, it was too low. So that's based on our historic expenditures. The amount that you chose, or did you still go over to make sure you're under? Year. Well, it just it depends. Like it, it's a guess. You're just 
you don't really know how many times someone's going to do be in that role. So, so did you ask what the it's an estimate. Yeah. We don't know. No, we'd have to run, I can run a report because when they receive foreman pay, it goes right to their salary line items, but we budget it as a foreman expenditure separately, but we don't, the year to date doesn't hit that foreman line item and the and budget it's not in it actually goes to their home No, but yeah. we could certainly. Well, see, that's one of those things. That's one of those things, to get that that's one of those things on the actuals would show for uh, maintenance, mm -hmm. where the other would be PLR. That's why I was writing that one gotcha. up to sort of look at yep. all the other lines. Because there's a lot of those that need to be changed over. That this would be maintenance. Well, it's a spectral we an actual would be, you know, and I think that's what the commission was saying, and I would agree. An actual would be something that you could use for a framework for its maintenance. The, to justify yeah. its maintenance. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But then when you still wanted more above it to be safe, that part's the PLR. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were saying also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is your first one of actually. We have so much to do. Holy no, mackerel, we thought it was all done. But it's never over. I'm saying, <laughs> I know. The truth is, though, you're going to be much happier. Silly me. Because you're not, you're not fighting. There's going to be a lot of the money that you're looking at that you're not going to fight over to, to get. It's just going to be automatic. Yeah. That changes the whole dynamic of the, the process. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, Commissioner Sun, the Bernard? All right, thank you. Marilyn, any last few questions? Wait a minute, she shifted the burden. She came in with this huge stack. I know. Paper stack now. Yeah, and you're all here. Solid. Solid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do you want to talk about paths and trails before we move? Are there questions That's, about paths and trails? Say, did you do anything with it this time? No. no. It's still the same? It's the same, same. Yeah. It's under the roads, Commissioner. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. You actually gave me a nice, pretty blue tab that I can't find. Okay. Well, I was going to say, the only thing that um, might come before commissioners later would be a potential expenditure request um, for grant match, but that, but we're, not, we're not planning we're not on that at this point, yeah. We explain it at the time mm -hmm. if we get there. Yeah. All right. It's got a lot of hoops to Yes, Go it before. Yeah, that will work completely the other direction. Mm -hmm. I'd be a fool to ask for. <laughs> <laughs> to ask a question. Making money. Questions. <laughs> right, making money. <laughs> for now. All right, thank you, Diane. Thank you, Alan Sidney. You know what time it is? It is 402 to 400. Yeah. They had budgeted last year sewer reclaimed water uh, sales. I don't remember that one. How did I miss that? What? Yeah, 1.75. <laughs> hmm. Okay. 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 I'm missing out on a boat, right? A revenue boat? Oh, um, so all, <laughs> the, all of the utilities are um, together, but there's subtotals there. So that oh. one is actually North Bay that you're looking at. Oh, still, we don't sell it, do we? We don't have purple pipe. That's our, um, that's our, our North Bay um, revenue. Yeah. 1.75. Yeah, but we don't have it's we don't have purple pipe. We can't. We're not selling any any clean water because we don't have purple pipe. The name's throwing you. The yeah, the yeah. description line should probably be changed to just sewer. I have the P 
PLRs, but not the overall. I guess I'll you know, jump on. I'll share with Marilee. <coughs> it's, it's fine. Okay. So you moved it down to sewer service charge, or before you were doing it under sewer reclaimed water sales? Yeah. Is that they, accurate? They corrected it in, okay. in this year's budget. Well, at least I found a 1.7929. <laughs> hmm. All right, since Zach is here, shall we kick off with solid waste first? And, um, and Bob, so this morning I invited Zach and Bob. We got switcheroo to morning, and Bob had to attend a pre out this morning for a large proposal up in Belfair. And Zach, I invited so he could, this is his first budget go around. And I'm very happy that Zach was able to participate and help with budget building and, and the look ahead on what are some of our big issues that we'll be facing solid waste in the coming year. So our look ahead, um, we've got a couple of contracts that are up for renewal this year and that could affect what we're spending for blue, back, blue box and our hauling contracts. And we also have our, <coughs> we need to take a look at our overall facilities themselves. So a big item this year is looking at how to separate our residential and our commercial waste stream. We've got some building rehabs that we need to plan for. Not necessarily that we're doing those rehabs next year, but we really need to start getting at a game plan for making those in out years. We need to think about some improvements in Belfair as well. And then the last item is more of an operational item, but we've been slowly upgrading our communications with our outbuildings and Hood supports the remaining building that we've been waiting for internet service for. And so we're hoping that that will be any day now and we can roll that out as well. And that will be very helpful in terms of being able to have closer connection and reporting times for our facility at Hood support. We're also looking to replace an old truck next year and uh, that will be a, a welcome purchase. What other big items, Zach? Does that kind of hit the highlights of yeah. what we're looking for, for on the solid waste side? So those are our main program items on solid waste. Are there questions about any of the, if we do the, uh, the PLRs? If, if, if we would keep the... Uh, uh, waste the turtle and have it brought down. Mm -hmm. What are, are we showing anything in here for an increase in the revenues? Or? We did not plan for that revenue at this time, so that would be a budget in there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do we have any idea yet how much? We had estimated on the low, conservative side 170000 I believe, yeah. is what we did. I current the word right away. It's going right now. Well, that's money to work with for those It is, projects. yes. And that's exactly um, what we were thinking. Um, when we are meeting with Mason County Garbage Wednesday, and so we'll be visiting with them also about what operation improvements might be beneficial on their end as well. And this is outside the budget. We don't want to bring back to us to look at the recycling again because now they're charging the individuals out there a fee on top of that with our income for recycling. They're charging another family and call some people where they're charging them extra. Yeah, I think with the recycling market the way it's being, yeah. it's gonna we're gonna have a, a big adjustment next year. That's why I brought that up in this is because yeah. next year's recycling world it could either we're gonna stop taking things yeah. or start charging customers for it. Well there we are. Okay. They're charging yeah. uh, I'm getting phone calls from people who are on top of the <coughs> recycling fee they're charging. They're charging a special fee because of the cost of the recycling to get rid of them. So they're paying an extra six and seven dollars a, a month. Yeah. Which is quite a bit if you think about it. That's it quite is. an increase <laughs> for for uh for last year. So that's up to us though, I guess. We didn't want to take that on the last yeah. time, but I think 
with a new increase we may have to. Yeah, next year it'll be, it's, I think it's going to be forced upon to be looked at as a, either we take X amount away or we actually say, okay, we're going to have to start charging for this or we're going to eat the bill. So that's on our blue box stuff too. Uh, on the, not on the garbage center, but on the blue, on the actual just the recycling side of it. The blue box contract now people see if they get an inflation except for um, you know the hall. But I think we'll see on that side. The only we'll see in cost increase will be you know maybe fuel and transportation on the blue box, uh, the garbage side of it. They call both blue box, which is yeah. something we get. But um, I think that's the increase we'll see. I think the biggest increase will be the recycling world. Because yeah. I just still up in the air, no, we don't know where it's going. Yeah. That's the hard part, so. Now, by, by our contract, though, they have to recycle it at this time. They can't use it in the waste. Right. right. And, uh, and they have to demonstrate and report that part of this as new, part of our the house new ecology. House waste. Yes, the new ecology right. grant. We they have to reply, actually show how much percentage is going into the recycling and what's actually being landfilled. How's that grant? Uh, explain the grant for me real quick. What, what is, are we getting it or are they getting it? We get it, um, but yeah. as part of our grant agreement, we have to have the haulers document what they're, what they're actually what the ultimate disposal is. Will be the difference if we don't take that grant then? We just don't get them. I don't think there's they don't show it that we get yeah. money we in, just, money out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So okay. It's just an extra income at that point if we don't pay as much to get rid of the recycling and the hazardous waste. We use it for those two contracts. So. so one of the things that we struggle with every year is the long haul solid waste disposal. Um, it looks like we're going to need a a budget increase um, this year. And what I mean by struggling is keeping under the budget. Um, so maybe we should increase that. Um, I mean, it looks like you increased it by, I think you're asking for 48,000, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're already at 85% of our, our budgeted amount this year of 2 million. Um, so maybe we should think about increasing that so that we're not looking for a solid word again. Yeah, as going yeah, out as a maintenance. Sure. We've got our percentage is up like six percent right now. Yeah, we're getting busy <coughs> every year, increasing, increasing. So yeah, it's great. If, yeah, right. the revenues are up, but um, on the expense side, it's also up. So right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe uh, something. Yeah. Something Appreciate that. But not enough. Is that it, Jen? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would say just increase yeah, it to hard when you're doing mid-year too. Yeah. Something. Yeah. When you're and when you're trying to keep it relative to your revenues, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I completely understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, the, with all the construction in the town, this it became really crazy this year. So, do we want to? Just make it like two point three. Oops. No, <laughs> me. If you can justify it, I'm good with with you know doing it as a maintenance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be too. Mm -hmm. okay. Jan, what's that or what's the escalator percent roughly? Um, so that would be um, so. Increasing it to 2.3 million, so that would be 15 percent. Okay. That should cover it.
I'm a, I, I, I think every day is a learning curve, so it's, it's that's, good for, got, that's good for all of us, though, when you do that. You got uh, rave reviews from the uh, leadership training that you went to recently, so. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Zach, very much. Of course. All right, commissioners, moving on to our water and sewer utilities. So, um, prior, Bob and I were reviewing some of the the big items that we're facing um, by utility, and if I could just quickly run through, starting with North Bay, um, you may recall we spent a good chunk of money on improving our Lakeshore lift station, and that is one of a few lift stations that have received deferred maintenance, and we need to be programming and looking at making improvements at the other stations as well. A lot of it is our controls and electrical work and we've been challenged in the past in getting contractors that are responsive to come and actually take a look at and assess and evaluate the problems and Bob and crew and Bart prior have done a good job in building some of those relationships with contractors and we've been able to have better service. That said, it can still be a challenge at times to get folks down to, to assist us with our, our assessment and implementing of changes. We also, in general, across all of the utilities, um, have had a turnover on our personnel side. and that remains a challenge and is not untypical, if you will, for utility operators in, in any arena, actually. But it's just something that we continue to wrestle with. Do we continue to have a relationship with Bremerton? Because I know that it was a personal relationship that he had, but have you been able to still try to keep that relationship so we have backup? We do, and then actually the um, the greater backup is the wall-worn system that BART enrolled and initiated. So it's much broader than just an individual relationship with one nearby jurisdiction. Um, it's a, an ability to call out for through any operators and participants in that program. That's nice. Yes, it is. It's very nice. It's typically geared more towards emergency type responses, but we could perhaps use for other non-emergency types as operations as well. And the short answer, yes, we've been working with Bremerton on a regular basis with the, the extension project and talking about operations. Um, so our operating, um, as Bob said, even with, when we're fully staffed with eight operators, it's often that we've got someone called out or something going on and that just leaves us really short to cover all of our utilities. Um, Russellwood, we completed the slip lining project and we'll be able to see some results related to that. We, on the water side, um, will need to pay attention to water quality. We're continuing to hear our uh, folks in the, the water system have concerns about water quality. So we'll plan to spend money this year on evaluating what can be done to improve water quality within the system. And that may mean treatment, it may mean starting with just some additional tank cleaning, but basically assessing what's going on in terms of source, distribution, what's the cause of the water quality, and what might be some potential solutions there. Beards Cove, um, I don't think there's anything earth shattering going on there. We've it's maintenance, basically. 
Belfair sewer. We also have lift stations that we need to address. We've got um, the plant is recently made some operational improvements and that involves using just one membrane rather than two. So the one membrane is receiving the flow that it should for prime operations and that has helped. As part of the, um, the work that our consultants are doing, I have asked them to scope what it might look like to do some potential assessment of our existing plant and what types of improvements might be useful to make that more efficient as well and usable. So that's kind of it in terms of just overall for our water and sewer utilities. A lot of the changes that you see in terms of expenditures are the fact that the work was completed, the water meter project completed, um, the slip or the the slip lining project was completed. I can help you um, the spreadsheet if you want to open oh, three okay. changes and send this. Thank you, Jim. On Norway, um, I do have a question about just the operating supplies. Is um, It was at 80000 in the June 30th, 2019 budget, and you're asking for 60000 this year, and we're currently um, through September of this year, have spent about fifty thousand. So I'm wondering if we should move that back up to eighty, just to be um, safe. Um, Probably sure. so. I don't. Maybe mid year we were way and under. And then, And then Jim, refresh my memory about the yeah. uh, reed transfer on Russellwood. Um, so <coughs> for Russellwood, I forget what the amount was that we were going to ask to transfer thirty. Thirty-some thousand, I believe. Yes, um, that was the amount that we could do legally, um, based on the um, capital, um, so that we're not overextending ourselves in the. Mm -hmm. Since it's only to be used for capital and not maintenance. Other questions? Okay. <laughs> Commissioner, the ones quickly going through lines. While he's doing that, I was going to say, Commissioner, yeah, I'll just, I'll just note, I mean, again, this might be another opportunity to go back through. Um, looks like a lot of the PLRs are maintenance. Yep. Right. You know, so just to kind of yep. clean that up and.
a lot of increases in the vehicles all the way around. Yeah, and we, depending, may need to revisit that. First one for revenue. Uh, just want to verify. We just moved the 1.75 million uh, and exchanged it with uh, sewer service charges from Reclaim Water, right? Yes. Okay. The other is uh, capital contributions. Now, on the uh, when we did the capital contribution, it's not showing as a REIT or anything else. Where did we get the, the money that we gave uh, on the North Bay sewer bill? The two hundred thousand last year. Good question. Okay, so we can look and find out if that came out of read, so we can categorize it correctly. Oh, no, that was from. Um, that's um, that's not just new connections. connections, right? So, we were able to get that much in new connections, and this year we expect thirty-three thousand. I don't think they didn't get that much in new connections. I think the 200,000 was extremely high, which is why it's been dropped down to 33,000. Okay, that makes more sense to me. So move that to maintenance then. Yeah. Um, so the transfer in from REIT, we're under the uh, Russellwood. Uh, we're not doing that this year, but you're still doing 30,000 to keep up, I take it? Yeah. Here's Cove Water. What's four twenty fund four twenty nine? It's reserved for them for the your system. Mm -hmm. uh, USD and grant we're done with our water system as you said, so that's what that comes up. We're not applying for that again. Uh, sewer extension, piece of planning design. Uh, did we actually spend that five hundred thousand? No, it was not extended. So did we get it all in? No. Then we should have our first billing is in the hopper right now mm -hmm. for about half that. Yeah, then there shouldn't be a zero. Yeah. And that is my if we're saying zero, so that should maybe say two fifty. Mm -hmm. Yep. Showing that revenue. Yeah, we need to update our um, pending um, yeah. and things like this, yeah. like the state excise tax uh, uh, the increase that's maintenance. But as he was pointing out, you've got a lot of them that are like that. So when you guys get together, you can go over and that's just maintenance. So that shouldn't, you don't need to request that right. from us. I don't know if that's very clear. It's not. And I, yeah. I think when we, I mean, doing this whole process next year, um, just changing the process will, will help with uh, these little nuances because we spend so much time trying yeah. to coordinate um, yeah. that yes. we kind of. Uh, lose the the big picture. <laughs> after, after you work together on this one, then the next year is going to be easy. So it's just getting us all together for the first one. Uh, can I give you a line? Uh, it's a professional service line. I have uh, 537.80. Now we're on the expenditure side? Yes, now um, we're on expenditure. 538, sorry. I have 537.80. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. What fund are you in? 402. Oh, yeah. 402. Yeah, 402. So 75,000. Yeah, you put in 75,000 for professional services. I'm just wondering what those are. We said a solid waste. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I believe that was to basically do some planning around Eels Hill. Okay. And Belford then? And Belford. Okay. <laughs> uh, another one where we're doing vehicles and stuff, and increasing that. Yes. Uh, long haul solid waste uh, disposal. Uh, you've got to increase to forty eight thousand. Most likely, that's going to be a maintenance. That's the one we just talked about. Yes. Yeah. That's the one we just talked about. Yeah.
402. Mm -hmm. 402 as well. That's because we bought that big piece of equipment. Yeah. And that's why we're doing it. Okay. Some of my answer myself when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I go through and I see those differences. Mm -hmm. uh, repairs and maintenance, um, 403. Uh, 100, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
right now we don't have, if we were, let's say that a decision had been made and we had a funding plan, we would have, we would show revenue in for a loan and then expenditures out to the federal government for it. But it's not included at this point. Yeah, I think so. So my only, my caution there would probably be, you know, in what turnaround time the court would like, so I'd probably rather be ahead of it than have to wait and try to catch a supplemental cycle. Yeah, the supplemental would have to be The other thing that we have open is the 1.5 million coming out of the Department of Commerce for the debt reduction that I don't believe has been budgeted as close. There's no way of doing it before this year's over, right? Well, we need to add it to the 2020 budget so that we can have that into the budget for the 1.5 million that we need from the Commerce. But there's no way we can tack that on to a December supplemental. Yeah, you would think you would because we should be getting the funds this year, right? It is separate from the music expansion. Yes. Yeah. I think if we can get it done this year, I think that would be preferable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank Another one just like that happened. It's still on the books in any way it may not. So we can look at the opportunities to get it done this year. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was a short time, but yeah. Make miracles happen, guys. Come on.